When Evil Lurks is a possession movie that comes from Argentina. The malevolent force spreads like a virus, creating more and more chaos. The film's brutal, and it's not for everyone, but let's see if it lives up to the hype. Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. <sighs> Smell something rotten. <laughs> I, th I was expecting something funnier after all the build up of all the sniffing. <laughs> it's a bit of a letdown if I'm honest, Tim. <laughs> uh, I, I should have went longer with it. Should have been at least two minutes of sniffing. Just two as a sniffing. <laughs> this is a horror movie podcast. We get together mm -hmm. and we talk mm -hmm. about a, a horror movie. We're catching up in 2023 horror films right now. And mm -hmm. one with a bit of critical buzz was When Evil Lurks, which is a... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I was going to say Spanish. It's in Spanish, but it's actually Argentinian? Argentinian? Yeah. I was phrasing that like a question just so you could confirm it, but you, you, you do you know... Mm, no. <laughs> uh, You'd be okay. shocked at how little research I do <laughs> for the show. <laughs> yeah, Argentina. It's from Argentina. There you go. Oh. Our neighbors to the... I want to say north. Tim. Tim. I mean, I'm no geography expert, but I'm pretty sure there's only one country north of the US on your side of the planet. <laughs> And I don't think it's Argentina. <laughs> well, sound off in the comments. If, uh... <laughs> oh yeah, all the angry Canadians <laughs> typing away right now. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh dear. Or angry Argentinians, we don't know. I mean, they may be angry too, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yes, welcome welcome to the show everyone. And before we get started, I'll just say that if you are enjoying the show, uh, you can hit mm -hmm. the like button to help us out, so please do. And of course, you can get bonus content over at patreon.com slash TV. I'll tell you more about what that content is at the end of the show, but those are the ways you can help us out. So uh, we'll get into it and we'll start spoiler free as we always do. Mm -hmm. Were you looking forward to watching this, Tim? Yes. Uh, I, you know, like you said, there had been some buzz about it. Um, I've been hearing good things, both from personal people and people I don't know. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that was such a weird way to phrase that <laughs> sentence. I, I guess uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I have some friends that watched it and I've also listened to, to podcasts and stuff uh, oh, podcasts. with I, people I don't <laughs> I, I, the way you said it made it sound like you've you've spoken to some people you know about it, but you've also went up and badgered strangers in the street. Hey, have you seen Red Evil Lurks? Do you recommend yeah. it? Tell me now. <laughs> I did some cold calling. I was uh, <laughs> you know, phoning people up. I'm just imagining you like a uh, Bobcat Goldthwait in like Police Academy, just like going up and yelling at people <laughs> in like a really over the top voice. Have you seen where he lurks? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I hate the phrase so random, but it's a, it's a pretty random reference. <laughs> Not that I, I don't enjoy it, but <laughs> I mean, I watched six of the seven Police Academy movies over like the week between Christmas and New Year's, so they're they're fresh in my head. And those were uh, doctor's orders? <laughs> uh, I mean, doctor of some kind. <laughs> okay. Doctor of comedy. Oh. <laughs> I had a, I had a dose of uh, 80s hijinks in my life for a little bit. Oh, who doesn't? Who yeah. Does? Uh, so, yes. Happy 2024, by the way. Wait, what? <laughs> It's Tim. a new year, 2024. I know, but we already recorded an episode in 2024. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and it's irrelevant to the audience because <laughs> we recorded ep their first episode of 2024 and 2023. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who this is serving, Tim, frankly. Well, well, these episodes uh, are designed to be evergreen. What's evergreen about you saying happy 2024? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that'll be dated very quickly. In fact, it was dated when you said it. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> oh dear, okay. I think the other thing about this one is that we've been catching up in 2023 horror movies mm -hmm. and they've mostly kind of sucked. 
That's true. To, to varying <laughs> yeah. degrees, okay? Mm -hmm. No one will save you. Sucked. Uh, <laughs> Dark Harvest. Sucked. Exorcist Believer. Sucked. The ones that we did guessed. <laughs> throughout the year kind of sucked mostly. There's one or two mm -hmm. exceptions, of course. There was one or two good ones. Like, obviously, Talk to yeah. Me was, was good, but... Uh, mm -hmm. but, it, but definitely been a stinkier year so far so there was a bit of hope coming mm -hmm. into this like, okay please save us save us when evil lurks give us a <laughs> give us a goodie give us something that we can be enthusiastic about it's a mm -hmm. possession movie it's a little different to other possession movies but it's set in a small Argentinian village and uh, kind of the evil from the person who's possessed kind of spreads around almost like a uh, disease might be a harsh or maybe not quite right but something kind of like a disease yeah. and people start doing very crazy violent things so mm -hmm. that is the basic premise we'll, we'll, we'll save more for spoilers and whatnot but uh tim yeah moment of truth <gasps> oh. how did you feel about when, when evil lurks uh, so I, I i again this one had a, a lot of you know buzz going into it i've I heard like pretty much nothing bad about it. I've heard mostly like good to, you know, pretty great things. So, um, again, pretty excited. And, um, I don't know if we did the director's other movie. I think it's just called terrified. Um, I don't think we did. He also did something yeah. called satanic Hispanics. I think. Okay. Yeah. That's, um, that might be another, um, uh, 2023 movie. We need to catch up on, uh, that's oh, really, that's like an anthology, uh, movie. Oh, I believe okay. it's all like different, um, so he did one segment probably then. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, which yeah, obviously the it's yeah I, I think different uh, Hispanic directors and stuff doing a horror anthology, but it sounded cool. Um, yeah, from Canada. Oh yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, his uh, other movie, uh, Terrified. I think it's just called Terrified. Um, it's confusing now with Terrifier. <laughs> I have to make sure that I'm going to fact check this. Uh, okay. Yes, Terrified is a movie he right. made in 2017. Uh, so I saw that when it came out, and honestly, I don't remember much about it, so maybe that'd be a good uh, one for us to go back to at some point. But I remember liking that one, too. Um, so, yeah, I was looking forward to this, and I will say, uh, I don't, yeah, it, it didn't disappoint. I, uh, I you know, liked it quite a bit. Um, it's a very brutal movie. Uh, don't go into it expecting a, a pretty fun, you know, uh, goofy time. Um I think it's pretty brutal. Uh, it has a very interesting premise, like you said. It's like possession stuff, but it does it in a you know pretty different, interesting way. Um, I thought you know there was some legitimately you know pretty surprising um, like you know, moments of, of violence and, and stuff that I didn't see coming. Uh, there's also a couple of parts I thought were like genuinely creepy, which you know we're very you know we're old jaded horror fans, so you know it, it's not like. <laughs> You know, we watch stuff and then we're, we're covering under the blankets and stuff, but I can still appreciate stuff when it's like, oh, like, I, I feel like this is, you know, scary or, or creepy. Like, it's not going to keep me up at night, but um, I don't know. I, I think there are still moments like that every now and again that are kind of cool. Um, I, If I'm going to be maybe a little negative and it, it's not the movie's fault, but I do think maybe it was a tad overhyped <laughs> again. Mm. Not saying that the movie's bad or that I didn't like it or anything, but I've been hearing like such good things and I think kind of to your point it might have been because it was such a bland year for horror i don't even really want to say like necessarily bad because i mean there definitely was a lot of bad stuff but there's also just so much stuff that just kind of felt very okay or average middle of the road uh you know outside of a few outliers but i do wonder if it was maybe a you know more of a heavy hitter year if uh as many people would be kind of singing its praises which again maybe that's kind of shitty like i don't, I don't want to sound like i'm not gonna too much but there was kind of a hype that was really hard to live up to going in but you know that being said though i, I still enjoyed it and had a good time yeah i i think i'm slightly more negative than you uh mm -hmm. like I, you know I, I didn't i wouldn't say i disliked it by any means um i mm -hmm. think there's some standout moments particularly whenever there's anything violent happening i i was impressed with how violent it was and how it was <laughs> capturing said violence mm -hmm. i i was into those moments i like some of the things it does uh particularly early on i think the back half for me really started to suffer though in terms of mm -hmm. how it was telling its story and its exposition and i love a movie 
uh, where it's dealing with something supernatural or something like that, where it, there's like a solid set of rules to follow. And this technically mm. has rules. In fact, they talk about them. They, they specifically say there's seven rules. But I also mm. felt like they didn't really clearly say or define why <laughs> why or what happens if one of yeah. those particular like when you talk about gremlins right there's like three rules and mm-hmm. you understand what breaking each of those rules will will do and i don't feel yes. like with the, with this movie i ever quite understood what was at risk of any of the particular rules beyond just generally the, the evil keeps spreading kind of thing and that was really murking up the back half of the movie for me because mm-hmm. it kind of felt like well it feels like it can just jump to anyone at any time and I, I don't know if the movie was, was working for me on that level. I think it's okay. it slowed down quite a bit after. There's a really chaotic part in the middle with a lot mm-hmm. of characters. After that point, I felt like it maybe kind of lost some momentum for me. And I don't think I was ever completely back into it quite again after that. So I'm, a, I'm actually kind of lukewarm overall, I would say. I think there's some standout mm-hmm. moments, and I wished I liked it more. But I don't love it. Um and it's not That's safe fair, it's yeah. not safe 2023 for me <laughs> i'm sad to say <laughs> unfortunately yeah <laughs> uh, no it's a shame it's a shame it's a shame but hey uh it's i mean it's, I mean, it's easily better than the last like three or four things we did <laughs> not including the bonus Absolutely. episode just ignoring right. that that's a right. separate thing <laughs> that deadly friend was 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 better <laughs> But that, that wasn't a 2023 movie album. No, no, no. That was like 1986. Yeah. So, so that's fine. No, it, it's... Yeah, I, it, it's one of those things where I almost feel like... Uh, uh, like, what, what's, what, what's not clicking here? Because, like, everyone's saying this is good. And I don't know if maybe I did come right. in with high expectations or what. I, I, I tend to feel, though, that whenever I question if I'm just being harsh or if I'm just, like, in a mm-hmm. bad mood or something, whenever I try and rewatch something like that that I felt that with, I almost always go, oh, no, I actually just feel this way. This has got nothing to do with mm-hmm. anything other than just, I just don't love it as much I mean, as everyone else. No, I mean, I, I totally get it. And, I, I mean, obviously, I, I think I'm more positive than you, but, I mean, also, I, I do agree, though, that, like, it didn't live up to my expectations. Like you, like you're saying, like, oh yeah, everyone is loving this movie, and I, I still enjoyed it, you know, quite a bit. But I, I definitely felt like, yeah, maybe I wasn't as high or totally in love with it as you know, like I've heard some people kind of gush about like online and stuff. Yeah, especially since I wasn't expecting this, but the movie kind of has mm-hmm. some like world mythology that's kind of like mm-hmm. already there when the movie starts. Like the characters when they start interacting with this possessed person who they refer to as the rotten, that's, that's what they call them. Mm-hmm. Um, like they always, they already seem to have an understanding to some extent about this. And there's even like some events in the world seemingly that have led to certain things in place to deal with this. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, kind of expecting them to go into that more and like almost go a little bit more, not, I wouldn't say sci-fi, but like more just sort of expanding mm-hmm. on the world and like what led to this. And it never really does oh, quite sure. go into it. Um, so, I don't know. It, it was I, I was almost a little bit frustrated that I felt like you, you can leave something be a mystery and have us learn it over the course of the movie, for sure. And it especially mm-hmm. works when the characters are kind of learning with you, or at least there's one character who's learning with you. Um, yeah. But it was almost a little frustrating at the start of the movie where it felt like everyone had, like, you know, they just kind of knew things. And I was kind of, like, trying to keep up with it. Like, okay, so, so yeah. when, when am I going to, like, have an understanding of what's going on here? Uh, and I don't necessarily need things to be like outright explained per se, but I just I never really felt like you know like for example, as a device that people who take care of the rotten use to mm-hmm. to deal with them, and I don't think I ever quite got even at like a hint as to why or how this mm-hmm. thing, well, why it's special, why does this work when you can't use anything else? I, you know, I, there's just stuff no. like that. No, I definitely agree. I mean, that was a uh, you know an issue I had. Um... Yeah, I think especially like early on, uh, you know, some people are talking about stuff uh, and I did kind of feel like, did I miss something? Like, as you know, it's like I, I'm not mm. on my phone. Like, I am like, like uh, you know, uh, play, paying <laughs> pretty close attention. Um, but yeah, I, I think the, the thing that's tough, though, is like the well, not, not that it's tough, but I, I do think it definitely helps that like. I don't know. I feel like there's a pretty solid direction. And uh. like you said, there's a lot of like really like violent like scenes that are peppered throughout. So it's definitely more forgivable in a movie like this, like versus 
yeah, if you know some just you know a uh, uh, generic Hollywood hack <laughs> kind of thing, um, that at least there's other stuff you can kind of anchor you know, yourself to in the movie. Oh sure, I, I think it's frustrating for me though because like if I'm just there for like the violence and like that stuff to be well directed, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily need it to take itself so seriously with everything else. But it was, <laughs> it was taking itself seriously with everything else. Mm-hmm. It's a very dour, dark movie. There's not a, like a. At that, like, I mean, I was laughing a couple of times because I'm a sick bastard, but it's not a, it's not a funny movie. It's, it's not, there's not yeah. a, like, I don't even think there's a single joke in the whole thing. It's, it's meant to be mm. taken very, very strictly seriously. And I think if you're going to like try and build a world around what's going on and you're taking it that seriously, I have to feel like I get some better sense of it. And I don't know if I ever sure. quite felt that way. So uh, that was kind of, a, and it was especially in the back half. I was kind of feeling that like they go to a character in the back half that's sort of introduced that I kind mm-hmm. of felt like just, oh, sh- this is the character who seems to know more than they do. And that felt like it was almost playing into the, you know, the horror trope of the, the exposition character who's yeah. got the, the, the background kind of thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to be too harsh because I, I think it's a, a solid directed movie and I do think the standout sequences of, of like extreme kind of violence and gore that it kind of hits you with. And the first time it properly happens, it is quite a shock that they, they mm-hmm. do something that kind of drastic. And it's like, oh, okay, that's what, the, you know, and it almost did kind of wake me up a little bit where I was, not that I was falling <laughs> asleep, but I, I was kind of just, you know, I was just kind of passively paying attention and I'm, well, right. and I'm just kind of into it, but I'm not like super engrossed or anything. And then there's a certain it's... scene with an axe that just kind of went, oh, wait, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Okay, I guess I'm paying attention like pretty now. Like you've got, you've got me, what's going on? It was kind of like up until that point, there had been a lot of talk about yes. why this is bad. And then when we finally start to see why it's, yeah, it is kind of like a, yeah, a swift uh, kick to the head, if you will. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, a, it's also, it's very guilty, actually. We say there's a lot of talk early on about things without actually anything happening. I think the other thing that it does that it's a little guilty of is they keep referring to characters we've not met yet. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like the name Ruiz was mentioned like ten times, and then like fifteen minutes into the movie, you finally meet this character. And I'm not saying you can't mention a character in passing, but they keep bringing him up in such a sort of direct way where maybe this is Ruiz. Ruiz did this. Maybe Ruiz did that. <laughs> and I'm like, like, could could we have some context for who Ruiz? Is? Like, is he a neighbor? Is he someone who is like a, is he like a, a cop or something? Is he a hunter? Mm-hmm. You know what? Like, give me some semblance of like who you're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, not not a huge thing, but again, it's just, uh, it was not a little thing. There's all these little things that were kind of keeping me from being mm-hmm. completely kind of engrossed because it is a shame because like some of the moments are very standout, and uh, we'll talk about them mm-hmm. in spoilers. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, so. Uh, with this being an Argentinian film, uh, I don't think I knew any of the actors uh, in this. I recognized Emma Stone, but other than that... <laughs> Where was Emma Stone? Oh, she, well, she had all the makeup on, but she was the, the rotten. The oh, okay. Oh, yeah. She did grab some hairy <laughs> business. I, I didn't notice that. Um, no, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, I didn't recognize uh, anyone either, but I mean, I thought everyone did a good job. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I, I think the movie looks pretty solid. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe nothing exceptional. Uh, they, they do some stuff later on where they kind of do like some, some creepy kids, which mm-hmm. I did kind of feel like it was going into sort of trope territory a little bit, even though I understand thematically why they were kind of going down that path. Because I, I was doing some mm-hmm. a quick bit of reading afterwards to see kind of, uh, you know, what the you know what the context of the movie was and like what the director sure, sure. was saying it was about and things like that um and a big part of it uh the, the director was talking about was the the failure of bureaucracy and the idea and there's a scene early on where the two brothers the main characters go to the police to try and get help that makes sense for the yeah. thing that's going on and they basically just kind of don't take them seriously they kind of shrug them off and that's like a big part of this uh, apparently it was inspired kind of specifically about there was like a like a farming pesticide thing in argentina or something that the director was kind of this idea of like regulations not being in place to protect people from getting sick from something and people feeling abandoned and that's kind of there my main went to uh covid honestly when i was watching this about not trusting people and 
something that's okay. spreading. Yeah. But I, I, maybe that wasn't what he was actually going for, but I was getting kind of vibes of that. Maybe it's because it's the I obvious that, big yeah. thing from the last few years, you know? Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And and again, I, I, you know, I will give it credit for, I don't know, I, I'm very, like, possessioned out <laughs> at this point. That's uh, fair. That's fair. So <laughs> I, I will give the movie credit for having a different angle on it. Like, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, I'm, if that's a good possession movie, I'm excited to see it, but, um, it's not something I, I generally get my hopes up for, but, uh, I thought this was a, a very interesting, uh, angle and a yeah, it, different way to do it. It did feel different. I, I, I will absolutely give it that. I, I, I didn't really know what the movie was about. And I just sort of like, before I started, it saw the word possession and went, Oh really? It's a possession movie. Yeah. <laughs> and we just did exorcist believer a few weeks ago. So I was like, uh, I don't know if I really want to watch a possession movie, yeah. but to be fair, it didn't feel like a traditional possession movie. It didn't feel like an exorcist movie or anything like that. It, <laughs> it was more, it was more like a little bit of a possession movie mixed with a little bit of like the sadness with a little bit of like a, oh, more, yeah, yeah. a bit more serious Evil Dead, I guess. Like there's sort of a, 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 I can see of, that, yeah, a mix yeah. of all those things kind of sure. bundled together. That's the best, <laughs> best I can do. But hey, Tim, we're, we're burying the yeah. lead here because there were some goats in this movie and you love you <sighs> some goats. I do, I do. You're um, a goat slut, as they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, I don't like to see any harm come to my goats and, uh, We'll see in spoilers if the goat makes it out or not. Well, there was a lot of goats, but there was one particular goat, uh, yeah. which is the focus, <laughs> admittedly. But, you know, I, I saw the goat and I, I thought of you, and <laughs> I could only think of the big smile in your face as the as the goats were <laughs> were there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were smiling for a little bit. <laughs> 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 Tim, it's a horror movie. Bad things have to happen, okay? That's how this works. Yeah, I just wish I, I hadn't uh, woken my son up and <laughs> and <laughs> brought him in to show him the goats. <laughs> that's where you're, well. that's where you're I, I thought you were saying you you screamed and cried so loud you woke up all the kids. You're on your knees like you're in like Vietnam, like screaming, no! no! Belly! <laughs> Belly! <laughs> <sighs> maybe yeah. a little bit of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so something bad may happen to a goat I'll, I'll, I'll mm. say that uh, we're, we're not in spoilers yet but just a little, mm. little tease um, trigger warning for <laughs> goat violence <laughs> which is a warning for you and like, the girl from <laughs> Jurassic Park and no one else <laughs> pretty much so, I mean, she was very distressed in Jurassic Park when they brought that goat <laughs> out she's like what, 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 what's that? It's like, it's lunch. What? But it's a good. It's a good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll never forgive uh, Spielberg for that. <laughs> I think the T Rex had a nice lunch, although it wasn't a full in lunch because he still ate the lawyer soon after. Right. Or I, I say he, she <laughs> still ate the lawyer. They're all female. Yes, please. As you <laughs> call. your pronouns right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They, they checked up all the dinosaur skirts, as uh, <laughs> Ian Malcolm put it. and Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to add to be honest before we get to spoilers because uh, it's, it's all big spoiler <laughs> moments I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's a straightforward movie. It's not like there's a lot of, like, oh, there's very interesting techniques at play here that, like, we can dus discuss or whatever. Like, yeah, I mean, the meat is more of, like, the story and the plot points and stuff uh, as it goes through. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd still say it's definitely worth checking out. It's on Shutter, so you know, a lot of horror fans have that. If you know, so it's, you know, pretty available and easy to watch. And I would definitely still recommend it for you know anyone that's looking for something a little bit different. Um, maybe if you, if you like more of that kind of brutal, intense violence, and or if you're just catching up on some of the more notable 2023 releases, it's it's definitely worth checking out. But, um. Yeah, I do agree. Maybe temper your expectations a little bit. Like, don't expect you know, oh, this is like the defining horror movie of the you know twenty twenties or or whatever. Like, you know, it's solid, but you know, it, it's still not. Uh, it still has a twenty twenty three curse of you know not being like over the moon. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Spoiler warning for when evil lurks. We shall commence with the spoilers. You've been mm -hmm. warned. Um, where to begin? Uh, so, mm -hmm. I mean, the movie just starts with the, so the two two brothers are main characters. We have uh, Pedro, <laughs> who I'd say is the main one. Uh, so so Hispanic me basically. Uh. <laughs> Because Pedro's Peter in Spanish, kinda. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then you got. Uh, so in IMDb, the brothers called. It's spelled J I M I, which mm -hmm. does look like Jimmy, but I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it was spelled Jaime in the subtitles. Yeah. So I'm going to say right, Jaime. But... I'm going to say Jaime, yeah. especially since we're talking about Hispanic characters. It makes more sense. Right. <laughs> that he's called Jaime. Um, yes. Maybe it's just a, a specific spelling, maybe in Argentina or something, but. Um, yeah, so they, they hear some gunshots in the woods, they don't go out, they're kind of scared to go out, and then in the morning they go and check out what's happened, and they find, like, legs and a couple of random bits of flesh, and there's this, like, device that's been smashed up, uh, and we don't really feel understand what this device is until much, much later in the movie, but they go looking and come near to, a, like, a little house that's nearby, and it's uh, a, a woman and her sort of teenage son, and then there's another son who they keep talking about being there, but you know she doesn't want to let them in, and they barge their way in to see him, because apparently they were waiting for someone to come see him, and that's maybe the guy that was dead in the woods. And they come in, and he's vastly overweight. He's got like he's missing like an arm. He's got like growths all over his face, and he's drilling. And they're like, he's a rotten. He's one of the rotten. <laughs> And, like, we have to do something about this. We can't just leave him here. Um, so that kind of sets up the, the core idea of the movie. And uh, I, so they, I think they go to the police first before they move him themselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, first of all, you, you find out that the, the person they're waiting for is, uh, I think, what they call a cleaner, who, mm, yeah. you know, basically is, I guess it's sort of like an exorcist. Uh, the I, I think he was still going to, kill him it's just that he's gonna kill him before like like uh, if there's certain ways you kill him like with a gun or something it just spreads the evil so you need like these special cleaners that can kind of first exercise the demon yeah, or, or and, whatever before uh, killing him and also if someone's a rotten if they're possessed it's building up to them giving birth to a a life form that the evil is so that's another thing that's kind of interesting yeah is like it's not just like oh you're just like a a human and you're possessed by a demon it's like oh no it it's an actual like um demon that's waiting to be born which is like oh okay that's kind of an interesting thing i haven't really seen before yeah and this, i think it's around here when they're talking about the fact that the, there's no church to help uh mm -hmm. we, we this is just a, like a little thing they bring up but it's actually kind of a big deal is that apparently in this version of the world something like all churches stopped like the entire mm. practice was abandoned and there's no church system at all anymore. There's no priest, there's no exorcists, there's nothing. And it's like, okay, so I was like, we're, we're in a world then where some stuff's went down or something's happened because this is not normal. This this feels like a yeah. an alternate version <laughs> of the world. Um, it, so, okay, you've set that up. Uh, <laughs> but the, the police don't want to help them. They don't take it seriously. They don't even come and check. So mm -hmm. they go to Ruiz. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the the one thing I wasn't like completely sure of was, yeah, like when they're talking to some other people, I, I was never quite sure. Like, okay, do they believe these things exist and they just don't want to help or like get their hands dirty, or, or do they think like these people are psycho? Sometimes I got like, I don't know, vibes of like one or the <clears throat> other, but I'm guessing it's more like. Maybe like more of the people in the kind of like city places that maybe are more, um, you know, don't believe that sort of thing, and it's maybe more of like the kind of people out in these, yeah, you know, more like rural areas or, or whatever, are more attuned to it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I, I it was hard to tell, kind of like mm -hmm. if if the police like take this in general seriously and they just don't believe that this is a like a valid claim or a valid case or if they just don't believe in it in general uh it was hard to get a sense of which way they were going on that but they, they feel like they're yeah. not going to get any help so they go to ruiz who's like another farmer or something like that 
uh, and ask him for his help. So he is very opinionated <laughs> about all this, <laughs> and he grabs his truck. He comes with them to to this the the rotten this big guy, and I I don't know if they were implying because later on when I found out he he literally had like a a child inside him that was going to be born. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, is he only this this big and fat because like he's he's pregnant oh, effectively yeah i maybe. don't actually know i mean he was pretty like overweight all over so maybe it was mm-hmm. a, a a bit of a little column a little column b but i was wondering if he'd gotten bigger because of that so they basically just try and move him and they're constantly complaining about the smell and like they, they, they drop him on the floor and he's a big guy like he's really heavy um, even with the missing arms so they're, they're, like they're struggling yeah. to move him and they get him to the and truck. To be fair, I, I will say, uh, or to give it some credit, th- I did think a lot of this stuff was legitimately gross. Like, you know, there's oh, a yeah. part where they pick him up and you just see, like, all the drippings <laughs> coming off his back. Yeah, and there's, like, a yellow stain in his crotch. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, everything about it is guy. It's, it's like a scene from, like, Seven, like, Fincher's, yeah. like, you know, got the gluttony character or something. I was thinking of this, yeah, something similar. Um, and then... Yeah, and like the the sheet they're carrying in breaks, so then like they're like, oh, like get get a blanket, and then it's like, yeah, um, whoever's blanket that is, say goodbye to that because there's no, <laughs> you're not getting that back, or you wouldn't want it back either. <laughs> no, 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 that yeah, <laughs> no amount of cleaning will ever <laughs> yeah, get that. <laughs> yeah, so so Ruiz's plan is basically to like get him as far away from the town as possible so that it, the evil doesn't spread to anyone else in their town, um, but of course you know this doesn't go that well they they almost hit someone when they're on the road and when they get out the truck when they think they've got far enough the body's not there anymore and like shit did it fall out when we swerved it must have done like where did it go so it's left in kind of an open-ended little thing until the next morning when the the big shocking scene happens that really sort of like sets the 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 big the the big set piece moments into effect And I will say before we get to that, uh, you know, thinking about it now, when you, you bring up that, uh, you know, uh, what the director was saying about, you know, the failure, failure of bureaucracy and stuff like I can kind of see that, you know, playing into this, too, where, you know, they don't care at all about actually solving this or helping this person. They just want it out of their, you know town and as soon as it is is like you know far enough away from they just don't care about it anymore yeah they just don't want it to be their problem right Mm -hmm. they want it to just be some someone else's problem get it far away so even even all the main characters are guilty of not showing like proper concern or wanting to actually deal with the problem um Mm -hmm. and i think the other thing that maybe shows you that it's people who are to blame for a lot of this is that like i said earlier like the movie establishes a bunch of rules. Like their their mother, uh, the grandmother character, eventually is in the film, and she talks about the seven rules, and she's talking to her grandson about it. Uh, basically, characters just break all these rules constantly mm-hmm. uh, because they're scared, because they're like they they don't want you wait, because they are mm-hmm. greedy or whatever the reason may be in the moment. But they keep breaking the rules, and it's like. Mm-hmm. This is something that potentially could just be completely contained and no one would have any problems except human beings. Like, And I think that's why I was thinking of COVID. Why does that sound familiar? Yeah, <laughs> that's why I was thinking of COVID when yeah. I was watching it because I was getting that vibe of like, oh, this this is mm-hmm. easily solvable if we all just follow the rules. <laughs> and oh no, never mind. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Although that said, though, I didn't think all the rules came into play as much as I thought they would. Like, one of them was, like, sure, sure. stay away from, like, electricity and lights. Yeah. I, and I'm, I like, didn't really know why. They, yeah, they never really did it with that. I was expecting that to be setting up a big scene or something later where they really yeah. used that in a, in a way, but it, it never did. Mm-hmm. And, like, they still would have lights on, like... All the time. You know, yeah. So. <laughs> um, I think I think one person did say something about candle lights okay. It's just electric mm. light that's bad. So Yeah, yeah. Maybe they could have used that more, used fire kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um the one big thing to say though is you can't harm the, the the rotten. You can't kill them, right? You can only kill them with a special device. You can't mm-hmm. just shoot them. Definitely don't shoot them. That's a that's a bad, bad, bad idea. Mm-hmm. So which I, I do like that rule because it's like, okay, yeah, like, you know, if there's like, uh, if this thing is so bad, it's like, yeah, why don't you just get a gun and shoot in the head? It's nice that they're like, okay, that's obviously off the table right yeah. away. 
and that's why the first things we see that happens actually is that yeah. next morning <laughs> uh Ruiz wakes up to his wife uh having a commotion outside and he goes mm-hmm. out and i actually couldn't tell quite exactly what they were looking at here uh, we just mm-hmm. see a bunch of goats and it's like oh wait is mm-hmm. one of them look iffy and it's not until like they make a noise and it clears the rest of the goats away that one's <laughs> just left standing staring at Ruiz <laughs> and Ruiz has got his shotgun and the wife's yelling not to shoot it because that's one of the rules is you, you don't mm-hmm. you know, shoot at the, a rotten um, although I, I was speculating as the movie went on like are, are all these extra people and animals that get infected are they rotten or is it just the initial person who's possessed who's the rotten it's a very very good point I I don't know <laughs> Yeah, that was a bit unclear to me, and I, I was leaning. I think by the end of the movie, I'm like, no, I think it's just the possessed guy who's the rotten, and everyone else is just a symptom of of what happened. But uh, yeah, because it seems like it's only one demon trying to be born. It's not like everyone else is. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So uh, there's a staring contest with the goat <laughs> as he's pointing the shotgun at him, and then the goat eventually just screams at him, and <laughs> he responds with shooting the goat in the head with the shotgun God damn it. <laughs> and it's pretty it's pretty brutal you see this the goat well, yeah. obviously not a real goat it's a visual effect but right. uh you you see like the, you know, the the goat with half its head missing and then that's not the surprising part because it was, it was building up to that we were kind of expecting him to shoot the goat because the goat's mm-hmm. evil yeah <laughs> what i did not expect was literally <laughs> two seconds after he does it we're just we're looking at him the, the, the shot's dead on looking at him <laughs> and up from behind, the wife walks up and just swings an axe into the side of his face. And you see it. It's all one shot. You just see it come into the side of his face. It's a fantastic effect. It looked mm-hmm. great. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> now now you've got my attention, movie, because I yeah. that looked really good. And it was very mm-hmm. surprising that she did that. And then on top of that, she then gets on her knees and starts swinging the axe at her own face. Mm-hmm. And I think what I loved about this, and I'm going to sound like a madman as I say this, <laughs> what I loved about this was mm-hmm. the realism of she can't swing it hard enough because she's swinging it yes, towards yeah. herself. So she can't swing it hard enough to properly go all the way into her head. So she has to do it a few times. And the first time mm-hmm. it's like, okay, it's a nasty cut and it looks really brutal and visceral to see it, but it's not a deep, deep wound because she can only swing it so hard. And then she does it a second time and the second time goes a bit deeper and then the third mm-hmm. time, and then the fourth time, maybe she like can't quite swing again because at this point she's dying because she's been axing herself. And I just I thought it was very realistic. The the, the no, I totally agree. The, yeah. the progression from the can't quite swing hard enough, but then as <laughs> she swung a, a few times, she's now losing blood and dying, so she's she's barely able to lift the axe anymore, and then she kills mm-hmm. over and dies. But I cannot emphasize the effects on the face of her as she's doing this, and then also the initial axe swing on the husband. Both look great. This was like okay, yeah. all right, movie. It. Well, she got for me because that was that was good. <laughs> no, like yeah, all the violence and the gore and stuff looks really great. And I mean, I'm assuming that this movie probably isn't like, you know, a, a super duper high budget. No, I'd... which like, you know, just really begs the question: like, why are there, you know, million dollar Hollywood movies that? you know the the special effects just look like shit <laughs> like <laughs> like clearly there are people making movies like this that you know the gore looks fantastic like why do we need like very obvious shitty cgi like wounds and blood sprays and stuff that just don't look real at all it's uh I don't know, it, it's baffling to me um because cg could be done after the fact mm-hmm. with a bunch of people sitting at computers uh that you know that's that's the reason you have to really care yeah. but you know it's the same thing we said when uh, terrifier 2 came out terrifier 2 had like what yeah. a couple of hundred thousand dollar budget which is absolutely insane mm-hmm. in this day and age for movies and its gore was phenomenal it was like yeah. amazing so it, it's just about uh the effort and like choosing to to focus on it and making sure you give yeah. it the, the, the attention it needs yeah, and uh, and then uh, piggybacking off of what you said uh, again, uh, I I totally agree with the the axe to the face. It was, um, so it's like a, I l- sounds like a, a song or a, an album. <laughs> axe to the face. Uh, yeah, like I love how the movie just makes you sit with that moment. Like I feel like so many other movies would, and and maybe it's because we watch a lot of like generic 
studio movies, uh, especially ones that are like PG-13 or something, that you'd probably see it like coming right up to the face and then it would cut to something else or maybe you get like, you know, one, uh, you know, a hit in, um, you know, before going uh, somewhere else. But I, I just love how it really just shows you like, yeah, you know, almost to the point where it's like, you know, <laughs> where it's, it's like, oh yeah, it, you like, you know, horror movies with blood and guts and gore, like, yeah, well, this is what it would really look like. And it's like, it is very brutal and, yeah, just the the fact that she has to do it like over and over again. Um, and also she's pregnant, which is not, you know. Uh, I, I, you know I forgot that. It... <laughs> I, I forgot she was pregnant. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, okay, like doubly <laughs> tragic. Um, yeah. Uh, this, this is definitely, um, you know, like, like some people when they have like newborn kids and then like, I don't really want to watch movies where kids are in danger now because I have this thing that I'm, very attached to it, looking forward to like this is not the kind of kind of that kind of movie for people like that to watch oh yeah i mean nothing's actually happened to a kid yet but it, it's coming <laughs> it's coming i mean this is honestly maybe my favorite moment in the whole movie there's a couple of other great ones but i think this act scene i don't think it ever hits this again i think this is yeah. the peak of the movie <laughs> yeah no, I, I can't argue with that uh yeah so after this when people discover that they're they're dead um, and also around here, the teenage son from where the 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 rotten came from mm-hmm. shows up at the brother's house and says, "I can't. What does he even say again? I can't even remember." But he basically needs a place to stay that night, mm-hmm. and uh, they're like, "Okay, you can sleep in the barn or whatever, but uh, you know, you're going in the morning," and they disarm him. And what's funny is that you actually kind of forget about this because they leave in the morning because they get they find out that people have died and that they, they're. You know, they go and do stuff. Yeah. And we forget that this teenager was spending the night in the barn and it doesn't come back up until the very, very, very end of the movie. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, once they find out what's happened, they start getting scared and uh, Pedro, it turns out, has a family, right? He's got an ex-wife and he has multiple kids with this ex-wife and she's got a new husband with mm-hmm. at least one more new kid with that husband. And he goes to their house and he's not supposed to be there. We find out that there's actually a restraining order from the wife for him not to go there. Um, and there's there's some indications that in the past he maybe like did something dangerous with like a, a radiator that may have hurt that was maybe going to hurt the kids. Um, mm-hmm. And the brother says later on that that was just a rumor that his wife made up to like get him into trouble. But we never. Mm-hmm. I don't think we ever really find out one way or the other if uh, no. he he did do something quite that bad. But um he's clearly concerned for them though he's determined for them to leave he starts like taking off all his clothes as soon as he gets in the house and they're like why are you getting <laughs> naked he's like i need some fresh clothes and it's basically because he believes that the evil's on the clothes he like mm-hmm. w- once he knows that uh you know ruiz and his wife have like died the way they have he's terrified that the evil's already spread to him so he's getting rid of his clothes mm-hmm. he's like now we have to go everyone's leaving and the, the wife and the, the ex-wife and the the, the the new husband are both like no, we're not going anywhere. You're not taking the kids anywhere. Explain yourself. <laughs> and it's while they're arguing about all this and the various kids are waking up and we're getting introduced to them, um, including the teenage son who's autistic, which is something that's going to come up as the movie goes on. Um, out of nowhere, the dog, which we've been seeing just casually getting petted throughout the mm-hmm. throughout the scene, the little girls petting the, the dog. Out of nowhere, uh, this has done really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go on. And just to, to set it up, I, I'm not sure what type of breed it is, but it is a big dog. Yes, yes. It's a, a big, and it's like meaty, you know what I mean? Like, it looks like it's strong. <laughs> I think what I like about this and the way they, they capture it is that it's in the foreground, so it's a little out of focus, so you don't, like, see anything oh, yeah. <laughs> too, you know, like, as much as I'm all for, like, kids, <laughs> you know, kids shouldn't be too safe in movies, okay? Kids should be allowed to meet the demise (laughs) especially horror movies yeah uh but in the foreground you just see kind of the dog lunge at her face and she goes down out of frame and then it's the little the little son who looks over eventually and you just get some quick glimpses Uh, and it's obviously not a real kid at this point it's just a dog like just you know tearing it's like a doll's face (laughs) but the body's kind of like jerking around so Like, what's happening here is a dog is eating the face off a little girl, and it is, like, mm-hmm. super brutal, and none of the adults are noticing it for quite some time because they're too busy yelling at each other. 
uh, I'll admit I was like pretty shocked by this. Like I, you know, like I'm already getting the sense that it's going to be a brutal movie. So it's like I didn't and, and the way they set it up, you know, it, you, you kind of know something is, is going to happen. But um, I would think more like, yeah, it would be something like, you know, it just bites like its head off or, or whatever. But like it it's just so <laughs> over the top and brutal and it to the point where it's not like it just bites her and lets go yeah it's constantly thrashing her and eventually it just like leaves the house with with her you know the girl yeah, she, in the mouth. yeah. it's dragging the girl down the street <laughs> and this is eventually when the adults know us and i think there's something to that again to go back to the failure of bureaucracy the idea oh, the yeah. adults aren't even witnessing this they're too busy mm-hmm. arguing with each other to notice that the kid's in danger and something bad is happening i mean i think that adds into mm-hmm. that theme as well um I'm sure and you, and you can say like you know while you know the adults are arguing about all this petty bullshit like the kids are the ones that are gonna be you know actually suffering yes the consequences of it yeah they're the ones that are actually going to be uh getting hurt they're the ones that are actually gonna although, have to deal with it yeah although to be fair you know not to skip too far ahead but she does end up being okay <laughs> kind of <laughs> depends if you take that as reality or not i'm not yeah. sure if i if i trust that that was really hard that was alive yeah uh yeah so, so the, the dog drags her out of the house and goes missing like the, the, the new dad's like running around trying to find her because this is the one kid that's his by the sounds of it so he's like really determined to find his daughter um oh and also this is like a double whammy for it's like people that like I feel like a lot of times it's hand in hand where it's like, well, I don't really, I don't want to see kids get hurt. And I also don't want to see dogs get hurt. It's like, (laughs) oh, this is like a, just going after everything precious. Yeah. And eventually when he does like find them, he like sort of like drives, he doesn't drive into them. Sorry. He, he finds and he, he hits the dog, right? Like, does he hit the dog repeatedly? I think he shoots it. He shoots the dog. Okay. Yeah. He gets a gun and shoots the dog. Mm -hmm. Um, but next time we see her though, well, the little girl, she's seemingly fine. She sort of walked back mm-hmm. up to the mom and she's hugging the mom and, the, and she's like, oh, it's, it's fine, it's fine, Look, everything's mm-hmm. okay. And the mom's hugging her and there's still commotion. Pedro's still arguing with, with her and like trying to get the kids away. And the the girl says something really ominous like, oh, dad'll come driving in a minute and then, pum, it Is does it, like a little yeah, I, sound effect. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was kind of adorable but also creepy. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think she says something like, dad is going to kill you and the mom was like what and then she's like he's going to drive your car and then yeah like so like pump and what i liked about this is i thought like okay they're foreshadowing something where like you know she's gonna realize her ex is right and go with them but then like at some point the current husband's gonna come back infected and get her but no i like that it's like two seconds later two seconds later the car comes speeding in towards them (laughs) and hits her while she's holding the girl although at this point the girl's like not real or she's like a demon or something because there's no way she's alive so (laughs) like it's just this brutal quick oh the mom's dead now like that this this like everything from when he like when um honestly everything from the act scene basically to when they leave this house finally in the car is just complete chaos in all the best ways yeah. and it's really entertaining and this was when i was that's just when i was having the most fun in the movie because it just felt Absolutely, like yeah. anything could happen around the corner um you know it, so he ends up leaving with his young son and his teenage son um and they go and pick up uh like the main brother is their mother right so we've got like, the grandmother character or two brothers and then pedro's two kids and they're in a car, and they're just trying to get away. They're like, we're just driving, we're, we're, go- we're leaving town, we're going as far away as possible, uh, we need money, it's a whole thing. And uh, this is where we get some of the rules, because the grandmother knows them and sings a little song about them and kind of sets yeah. some of this stuff up. Yeah, and the, the other thing that kind of stinks is, like, I feel like, since they don't all really feel like they come in into play and stuff it, it's kind of hard to remember all of them like it, it's not like you said like you know, yeah as, as an example of gremlins which like it sticks in your mind because it is you know for, uh, there's fewer of them but they're also like simple and they also all have an effect on they the all story. matter like, yeah they all matter like we, all, we see the effect of all of them like i can tell you right now don't feed them after midnight don't mm-hmm. put them in direct light especially sunlight mm-hmm. it'll kill them and don't get them wet yeah <laughs> you know done but there was like four in the middle of these seven that I couldn't even tell you. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, okay, yeah, don't use firearms. I, I get that. Um, 
I, and then I think one of them was like, don't move the rotten or something, which, <clears throat> yeah, like when you hear that, it's like, okay, well, <laughs> that's like the very first thing they did. So yeah, well, that, that why, why, why did those two idiots do that then? That, yeah. that feels like they should have known better. Uh, one of but them that comes also, up, though, like, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, one of them that comes up is uh, that they prey on those who are, like, don't fear death, because if you fear mm-hmm. them, they'll victimize you or they'll gain power from that and she keeps mm-hmm. criticizing or uh, the other woman that shows up later keeps criticizing pedro because she's clearly scared of losing his kids so that yeah. means that he's a target kind of thing mm-hmm. um but yeah and then the thing that is kind of annoying is that yeah like some of the, so much of the, uh, this stuff like you you mentioned earlier um it, it's cool that they're setting up rules but i don't really understand the why or the consequences of like yeah, for example, when they say, like, oh, yeah, you can't move them, it's like, okay, well, I understand that that's important because that's what they did early on in the movie, but why can't you move them? I feel like that, that one especially bugs me because it's so specific. Like, yeah. you know, it feels like, like, I, I, they don't have to explain what, because Gremlins doesn't either. Like, when Gremlins introduces the three rules, it doesn't mm-hmm. tell you when it introduces the rules what each of them do. But the important thing is, is that later on we see one broken and then we see the effect of it. Each one has consequences that we can clearly understand were because of that one rule being broken. Whereas yeah. this movie, one of the things has already kind of happened and it feels really specific. And then the other ones, it doesn't feel like there's specific things that happen because of each one individually being broken. It feels a bit more mm-hmm. just kind of wishy-washy and like generally evil things are happening. So as much as they say they have rules, it feels more like a supernatural movie where there is no rules because yeah. none of them feel like they matter. So, yeah. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, I can't remember the exact progression here, but they end up going to see, like, uh, Jaime, uh, the, the other brother. He knows someone who knows things about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone who used to be a cleaner, uh, as, as they're called. Mm-hmm. Uh okay oh, maybe i'm misremembering some but the uh, i get uh, that probably make more sense if she used to be a cleaner for some reason i was thinking that she used to be infected or something but maybe that's wrong no i think she's a clear because she had yeah, the, the, that she had the device that kills them apparently okay. um yeah. so okay. or maybe it was maybe it's because like they mentioned something like like oh like she's seen this before or something and maybe i uh oh no the, my head or something. no they, they said that she'd seen a rotten before okay yeah yeah Okay, that, that makes sense. Which I'd hope so if that was her job, was to kill right. them. Like, <laughs> otherwise, she wasn't doing a very good good job of it, was she? Yeah, um, yeah so so we end up sort of bunking at her place a little bit, and she's giving them advice, and go, they have some quieter moments here where the brothers catch up and bond, and uh, I, I did feel the pacing take a hit here. Like, this portion of the movie, yeah, it kind of felt yeah. like everything was dialing down and resetting. Um the big thing here is that the autistic son, uh, the the woman that they come here, I think Martha is her name, I want to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she says, why did you say that name? Sorry, I had to make that joke. Uh, <laughs> she, <That's good. laughs> she thinks the autistic son is infected with the evil. Mm. And they're like, why? Because no, they're saying, oh, no, he's just autistic. And actually, I did have that thought. See, when he was first introduced at the start of the movie, or like mm-hmm. not even the start, like half an hour in, um, I was actually thinking, is he normally like this, or is this a sign that he's been possessed? And then obviously it becomes clear, no, no, he's, he's autistic, this is just how he is. Yeah. Um, but sh- she says that, uh, that like, there's some marks in his hands, because when mm-hmm. a demon or a, the evil spreads to someone who has autistic or something like that, is they don't know how to actually control their body in the same way they do other people. So it, mm-hmm. it, it's like more challenging for them, or, or something yeah, to that effect. I, I think she said something along the lines of like, it can kind of control the body, but it can't like get into its mind or something like the mind is a knot to them. I, I, yeah. I something like along those lines, which is, a, I think that is a pretty interesting idea, but again, they don't really explore it that much. No, like they saw a creepy thing. So just to skip ahead here, because it's kind of separate from everything else going on is that mm-hmm. whilst all the other third act stuff is happening, the, the autistic son is with the grandmother and he comes mm-hmm. into the house and he's talking which he's not been doing. I mean, he, he sort of makes like noises and maybe says like simple mm-hmm. things, but he doesn't really talk properly like everyone else does. And mm-hmm. here he wa- he walks in and he's just saying full succinct sentences. And it's meant to be this creepy thing of like, wait a minute, how is he doing that now? Like what's happened? He's clearly yeah. 
possessed or whatever. And then you don't really find out what happened between him and the grandmother till the very end. But uh, mm-hmm. so it, it does something with it. But I, I thought they were again they were going to do something more with the idea that he's either not immune, but be- because he, he can't be controlled in the same way that the others can. That maybe there's something that they can use with that. I I thought it was gonna be like something like they could trap the demon in there or something, and then mm. which I mean, <laughs> admittedly, would be like pretty messed up, but. Um, you know, I, I thought that was an idea that they might be going towards. Yeah, I'm not necessarily saying that these ideas here with the autistic son are necessarily good. I just, this is what I thought they might right. be set it up. I just, you know. <laughs> oh, right, right, clear. Right. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought this stuff was interesting, but I, I, if, if someone told me, like, actually, it's pretty problematic, I, I wouldn't, like, you, you know, argue that. Or so oh, yeah, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not putting up a fight, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, fair enough. Um, so basically, the the brothers split. In- okay, let me ask you a, a quick question oh, though yeah. uh, about the so then the you know the eventual scene that you get with the the grandmother. I'm just curious, yeah. like, um, do you do you kind of admire the restraint they have in not showing it? Because that could have you know easily been like you know a setup for like all right, let's show like an, another cool kill or something. Or um, do you think it's kind of admirable that they're like, no, we're gonna show restraint and just kind of let you imply what could have happened and then just leave it as that kind of one creepy scene between him and the grandma i think it's a choice that maybe comes out of something different which is that they want it to be a surprise at the end when we find out what he's mm-hmm. done right mm-hmm. uh and i think that's why they intentionally don't show anything specific it's just like a creepy little vibe that something sure. bad might mm-hmm. be happening but we don't know what uh mm-hmm. so I would say it's, I say it's good restraint in the sense that it, it helps them achieve the moment they wanted later. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, I admire maybe a bit strong, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I I just think like other movies, you know, where it's just like oh, like you know, let's try to get as many kills or stuff as you know as we can. Um, ah, there's that. I, I think it's nice to that to have a little restraint or whatever. Yeah. So. Actually, it's around this part of the movie. I mean, before the grandmother scene, because that's what after everyone's left. But the <laughs> the the mother uh, character who who was hit by the car, uh, there's actually mm. a scene where she calls a phone, like the the grandmother's phone, and talks mm. to Pedro over the over the phone and says that uh, you know what does she say again? She says they're they're all going to die, and it's his fault. Oh, and she she mm. starts saying things about their their personal life where she's like, oh, you know, I had sex with everyone else because you were a mm-hmm. pathetic man, blah blah blah, that kind of thing. Um, but she ends up showing up at the house, uh, when they're all trying to sleep or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has this sort of creepy entrance where she comes up and like sort of like bangs on the window next to the autistic son who's in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's a bit creepy. You don't quite necessarily know like everything that she's doing or going on uh but it ends up with her grabbing the younger son and jumping out the window and just going off into the into the night with him Mm -hmm. uh which leads to like what the two brothers end up doing is that pedro goes with martha to try and find the 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 rotten that they dropped Mm -hmm. off in the road because She's like, we have to find him and put a stop to all this. So Pedro's going with her to do that, uh, whereas Jaime is going to try and find uh, the young son uh, with with the... I mean, we know she's, like, undead, but he doesn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's and, how that splits up. Uh, and I think what you mentioned earlier, um, the reason why the, the brother is going after the son is because, like you were saying, um, they were afraid that his, like, fear uh, of the children coming to harm would be like something that empower the demon so uh you know it, it was kind of nice and, and interesting to see that uh come into play um yeah luckily you're an uncle who doesn't give a shit about your uh, nephew so you can <laughs> you can go and save him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh i will say like all this uh, i i think all the stuff with the mom was uh genuinely very effective and uh creepy like i um I can see the comparisons to like Evil Dead, like um, more like you know the first Evil Dead, where it's you know a bit more horrorish, but like the... that, this was the part that felt like it was playing on suspense a bit more than just like yeah. violent gore like coming out at you. This this was a bit more like oh she's mm-hmm. creeping about, she's going for the sun, you mm-hmm. know, kind of thing. Obviously, the violent gore does come when 
uh, what's his name, uh, Jaime, does catch up to her. He's driving down the mm-hmm. road, and he slowly drives past her, and she's basically just walking, holding the son, whose mm-hmm. head she's cut off or like ripped off, <laughs> and she's just like eating parts of his brain, like she's eating a bag of yeah. candy. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I was kind of wondering, I guess not that it really matters, but I kind of wondered if the son died in the fall and then mm. she was just carrying his corpse and then, you know, d- decided to start munching on it. Or she if. Got, she got peckish, you know, you, you know yeah. how it is. You, <laughs> you accidentally kill your son uh, to, <laughs> you know, you're already undead. He's right. dead now. You get a bit. You should, it should, happens to the best of yeah. any parent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if it was that or like, yeah, maybe she jumps down and then like, maybe she takes the brunt of the fall and he survives. But then obviously, yeah, <laughs> at some point just uh, kills him herself. And um, yeah, there's something I, I did find very creepy about, you know, uh, how much the demon mother you know, kept saying, like, the kids need me. You're going to kill them like you're, you know, like you're so bad and, and stuff. And then like, it's obviously the one that is the danger. Uh, and that, yeah, it ends up killing him. Uh, so that, I don't know. There's just something, uh, I, I, I felt that was kind of creepy about that constant, you know, being like, no, I'm, I'm the one that's good for them. And then, yeah, it, it's just a bold faced lie. <laughs> you know, it, it's just, a you know, they're the big danger. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that visual as well, her just eating brains out yeah. of the, the hollow head of her dead son is a pretty striking visual that will stick with you afterwards. Yeah. And then uh, we were talking before about how they say, like, you can't use uh, electricity. So as he's, like, driving the car, he's, you know, turning off his headlights. He's only occasionally turning on, you know, to kind of make sure, you know, he can take a quick look around and see. So it, it leads us, like, nice little visual effect where it's like it's dark and then you turn the lights okay i got a little bit of light okay turn it back on then you know turn it back on and then slowly starting to see the mother uh, appear in the lights and then yeah once you get that full shot you know uh facing front with her and it's yeah it's pretty brutal <laughs> yeah and then he uh rams into her with the car right into a tree yeah yeah uh just to I guess try and take her out. Uh, <laughs> even though they keep saying don't hurt them. Yeah. That's one of the rules. But mm-hmm. oh well. Uh, so we have um the you know the main thing, which is is Pedro and Martha <laughs> going to this uh part of the road school? where they drop the rot. Oh, and, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well yeah, it leads them to a school. They're looking for mm-hmm. the body. And there's a school nearby and they go in and there's like all these kids just sitting in the class with no teacher and it's nighttime mm-hmm. as well right so it's yeah. kind of weird uh so we're doing some creepy kid stuff here in your your third yeah. act and i i, I think, do think like later on it, it got maybe like a little uh tropey like I, I think you mentioned earlier but i do think the initial scene where they're first just wandering the school and they kind of like almost casually just walk by the classroom and then they kind of look and notice that there's like, yeah, just all these kids in there and just like looking straight ahead and there's just nothing there. Like I, that kind of affected me of being like, Oh, this is yeah unsettling. <laughs> yeah. So it, Martha sets up this thing, which is that the evil can use children and that children will protect mm-hmm. the evil. And I don't know if that was like, maybe if we're going to, back to the themes of the movie, like is that getting at the idea that it's not that children themselves are protecting ideas that are being pushed it's more that children are used as like an excuse for doing or not doing certain things Mm -hmm. like you know when you're arguing for you know why or why we should do something as a society why rules should be put in place oh no think of the children protect the children Mm -hmm. so they're almost used as this shield uh and i was wondering if that's That's a good interpretation i like that yeah i was i was wondering if it was kind of getting to that kind of thing um but they're looking for the body. Uh, some of the kids try and tell them that the the body was taken somewhere else. And Martha says, no, 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 no. If they're all saying different things, they're lying to get us away from mm-hmm. here. It means that it's here. So they go back into the school. They find a bunch of dead adults, presumably all the teachers, uh, mm-hmm. under the stage in the sort of the, you know, the cafeteria the area with the stage or, you know, or maybe maybe they've got a separate theater room. I don't know, but yeah. Uh, and all my in my school, the, the cafeteria was also the the assembly hall with the stage and all that. Mm. Yeah, uh, we had different ones, but 
I mean, yeah, I, I can see that though. Well, in early school, high school was different. High school had like an auditorium that was separate, but oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, the uh, point being is, um, we find these these teachers that are all dead, and they're convinced that the rotten must be underneath all these teachers. I actually didn't know why they thought that, but they were right. <laughs> it, it was there. <laughs> so, you know, they go moving bodies out of the way. She's setting up her device and he can't lift this guy up. And I was thinking this because mm. she keeps saying, oh, I, I, need, I need to like get, see him properly. So get, get him up on the stage. And I'm like, it took four men to move this guy <laughs> at the start of the movie. There's no way this one dude is picking this, you know, 400 pound man. Right. <laughs> you know, out, out of this pile of bodies, not a chance. Uh, yeah. He's able to sort of like pull him up a little bit so his head's sticking out. Uh, but the kids convince Pedro, they come in and they convince Pedro that there's an axe in like another room or something like that. Mm-hmm. So he goes to get that. The kids lock him out and then kill Martha when he's not there to protect her. And you just see her like, like almost dead, like body being dragged. There's, there's just a little bit of life in her eye and her head's been bashed <laughs> in. Yeah. And this was a little frustrating. Like, yeah, I feel like he fell for this way too easily. <laughs> yeah, this this was sort of convenient for the sake of the the plot, I guess. I I did. I mean, it was violent. Like seeing this little girl like bash her head in with a hammer was pretty. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Brutal. <laughs> uh, like it, it does make me wonder how they did some of these shots where they're doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. I assume obviously it's just a fake head on the hammer so that she can yeah whack away without any uh any any fear, but. <laughs> Or any guilt of <laughs> actually killing a human? Well, it'd be guilt after the fact. That's why I'm saying fear. <laughs> Beforehand, it'd be the fear of killing a human. Right, but I mean, I feel like, you know, if someone says, hey, you know, take this hammer and hit this person in the head, like, I'd be like, I don't, I don't want to do that because I'm going to feel guilty about that. <laughs> I mean, it depends who it is. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, like, if you said to me, like, here's a hammer... Go on, give Connor a bash on the noggin. I'd be like, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> he has got bright red yeah. hair. It's a good target. <clears throat> um, one thing I I feel like I don't know. I, I I do like this section, but it does feel like there's some stuff that could have been tightened up. Like, I mean, maybe it 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 just sticks out a little bit more in. in my head like it's not like it went on super long but it's it's kind of like it did seem like there's some weird like back and forth st- stuff where it's like oh yeah we're gonna leave the school and then wait a minute no they're probably lying let's go back into the school and then it's kind of like oh yeah like there's dead teachers here and then like uh oh later on like oh wait no actually the dead body is here too like i don't know it feels like you kind of just kind of did that without like going back and forth and i mean it, it's not like it was super long like but still i don't know it is enough that it kind of stood out to me yeah, I think an issue for me here is that you've got all these kids just acting like drones or soldiers for mm-hmm. the for the evil itself, and I feel like mm-hmm. that was out of nowhere for me in the sense that I don't like if one of his kids early on has been acting like that, where they're not doing mm-hmm. something violent outright, but they're sort of like trying to lure them into like a trap where the evil would want them or something. I'd mm-hmm. feel like that was set up, and then this is the payoff is you've got a whole army of kids that are working against you, but it just kind of shows up here and like she's like oh no mm-hmm. like they work for the evil they'll protect the evil and the evil will protect them i'm like okay but you're just telling me that now like couldn't you set this yeah. up <laughs> earlier on in the movie so I'd, I'd be scared as soon as i saw a bunch of kids because like you've established that they're a threat that they're a problem uh yeah and, and also i'm kind of starting to wonder like what is like what else is going on in the the town or the city because yeah obviously if all these kids are here they must be missing from somewhere uh yeah. so like are you know the parents and stuff dead are they searching for the kids like uh i mean i'm, I'm guessing there's just like from the little we've seen earlier <laughs> it you know in the the city scenes that there must just be like utter chaos going on now but i don't know i don't, yeah. may, I don't know if it'd be would have been interesting to see some of that or yeah possibly i mean just be a budget thing um Oh sure, sure. Yeah, it's it just be nice to get an indication of some kind. We don't just even have to see much. We can keep it kind of focused on like the the characters we're following. But um, yeah. So and then, I'm sorry. And then uh, did we also see? I forget it was here, but I think at some point we we also see the the boy that they almost ran over in the road. I, I think it's like here or something at, at the school. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I mean, it's just like a a nice little bit of tying stuff together sure sure uh 
So when he gets back into the room, and Pedro gets back into the room, uh, you know, like he grabs like a piece of the the device that was going to kill the the rotten. It's in pieces. Mm-hmm. The kids have kind of dismantled it, but he grabs like the main piece. It's kind of like a telescope, and he just mm-hmm. starts bashing the rotten guy in the head repeatedly to kill him. But mm-hmm. it's too late. Also, I. I I don't think when they said that you have to kill it, kill them with this device that they have to set up and has all these moving parts. I don't think they mean literally just bashing it on the head with a right. part <laughs> when a, with a part of it would count as that. Maybe it would. Mm. I don't know, uh, but it doesn't matter because the evil child from within him is born. So we get this like naked kid who's completely covered in blood, uh, mm. sort of walking like past them, and he just kind of touches Pedro on the head, who at this point is just kind of like lost all hope. And just leaves him alive, because uh, oh well, no reason to kill you. Uh, sure. <laughs> d- go go live your miserable life now that I've killed everyone <laughs> that you care about. Uh, mm-hmm. And the other, the bloody kid walks off with all the other kids who are all sort of under his control. And that's pretty much the end of the main story. Obviously, there's a little <laughs> epilogue with the uh, the characters that gives them an even even meaner personal ending. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is not a cheery movie. Uh, at all <laughs> no no so yeah at the end of the movie is that they go back and they get the the teenage son the autistic son and of course you're thinking well where's the grandmother like they don't even mention it i don't even think they don't any of them says like where was she maybe they did and i missed it but uh they go back to their home and they finally give the autistic son who the whole movie had been wanting some apple ice cream which by the way i have never heard of apple ice cream but fair enough. It sounds like it's a thing that exists, but uh yeah, jeez. Um I feel like I, I literally just this weekend saw something. Maybe maybe it was like at a donut shop or something that it was like a mm. it was like a green apple kind of like an icy slushy kind of drink, which yeah, not exactly the same as like actual ice cream, but yeah, because you know, definitely an unusual flavor. Yeah, you get strawberry <laughs> ice cream, you get lemon ice cream, you get you know, there's a lot of fruit ice cream variants, but I've never heard of mm-hmm. apple ice cream. But I believe it exists. It sounds like a real thing. It's just not something that's common. Uh, right. Yeah. Here, uh, but it finally gets some apple ice cream, and this is when they find that teenage kid from the the rotten's house in the barn. He's still there, right? And he basically just confesses to like killing the person in the woods he was the one that killed the one that was coming to like kill the rotten Mm -hmm. and then like they ask okay well what happened to your mother then where's she and he says oh the same thing that happened to your mother and you're like wait a minute what (laughs) what 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 uh so turns out the autistic son ate the grandmother (laughs) uh yeah yeah because he starts coughing up hair and then the father starts pulling it out of his mouth and eventually there's like a necklace or something that uh he yeah. recognizes uh so the movie ends with him going outside falling to his knees and just crying in pain and misery <laughs> and that's the end of the movie <laughs> yeah. uh, happy days try- everyone everyone clap <laughs> i'm trying to remember if that scene with the son and the grandma when yeah he's like acting you know, uh, like, you know, different and non-autistic and stuff. Um, I, I, I think he asks her to make him something to drink. And he's like, oh, I want something to drink, something. Well, I'm trying to remember if he also asked for, like, food or something. Because, um, I don't that, remember. That a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if it did, then, that, yeah, it might be a nice, some nice little setup for her fate. But yeah, I will say the, the pulling out of the hair of the mouth was quite disgusting. I Yeah. Like, yeah. Er, everything else in the movie, I, I had, I, 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 let's be honest, I had a grin in my face for every other violent thing that happened in this movie. <laughs> but the pulling the hair out of the mouth was disgusting. Uh, mm. So, yeah, not, not, not for me, but uh, effective uh, for, sure. for, for what it is. Obviously, it's a very depressing, like, nihilistic movie. <laughs> it's the sort of thing where there's no hope at all. Which I think is is okay to a point, especially when it's it's trying to say something. And if this is yeah, may it represent the failures of the people in charge not being able to help those around them, or even just like people in general not following the rules, and it leading to all these bad things happening. And this ending's kind of like, well, this is your just desserts for 
everything you have decided to do throughout the course of the movie. All you've done is act scared rather than act mm-hmm. rational in that fear. And I think that's why that's one of the rules. I think that idea that if you are scared, like that's a weakness against uh, yeah. these things. Because if you just act scared and don't just act with logic and and uh, compassion, then you know bad things will happen. And I think that that's tying into the, to the themes as well. So I do like that, that it has such a strong connection to to something, you know, to to its commentary on bureaucracy, whether that's you know about the specific incident that I read the director talking about in Argentina, or something that we can maybe all tap into like COVID, because we all, we all kind of had to go through that, but. <laughs> At the same time, I do think the, the the storytelling does suffer a little bit, especially in the back half, where I feel like things weren't satisfyingly set up enough to have payoffs. Like, I wasn't feeling like I was getting things paid off as much as I was just being told things as they were happening. And that was making the back half of the movie a lot... Because like, in the first half, okay, you're t- teasing something arguably you could maybe do some things a little bit better but for the most part i'm excited by the chaos i'm excited to learn what's going on and i'm enjoying the 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 film making and the effects but once you get to the second half and it kind of starts to feel like we're still just kind of like bringing up things as they're happening i i found that quite underwhelming and quite weak from a, a writing perspective but i mean you know people you know this has a very high rating on rotten tomatoes people seem to love it so clearly i think i'm actually in the minority on this one which is good. Mm-hmm. Most people like it. That's fine. But I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't like really disagree with what you're saying. Um, I just I, I think for me personally, the the stuff that was good um, lifted me up enough where it, it's not like I, you know, ignored that stuff. Like, I do think it was still an issue, but just, you know, it, it didn't bother me maybe as much as you. But um, I I agree with what you're saying, though. Like, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing for me would just me probably be like a little more explanation uh you know of this world and, and the rules and how the rotten works and it, it's always tricky because yeah you don't just want you know someone to come up with uh just like you know an exposition dump or to have like a boring generic research scene so i don't know it it yeah sometimes i'm like well at, at least they didn't do something kind of cliche like that or whatever but at the same time I, I think it does hurt it a little bit not really having that context for how some of the larger world works but uh yeah i, I can't argue though with like the stuff that does work I, I think works really well which is yeah like you know the the violence and the brutality and that sort of thing I think if they hadn't mentioned that the church system had collapsed, I wouldn't be thinking mm-hmm. about the larger world that much. I'd just be thinking this is self-contained. Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, because they brought that up, it kept making me think about the the larger world and if like the city's completely just in chaos right now or if mm-hmm. it's just more specific to those who this thing's come in contact with. Because I do mm-hmm. like the idea of the like this body like fell near a school. Like, you know, when they were on the truck with it <laughs> and it fell off the truck, it landed near a school and there's just evil coming from it. And that evil, we find out later, made his brother, or whoever he is, to, to eat, eat the mom and kill this other guy. Here, yeah. it completely turned all these kids into evil monsters who murdered the teachers. Like, this idea of like just evil spreading around this thing, wherever it is, it made me think a little bit, and I like this movie a lot, is uh, uh, Werner Herzog's Nosferatu. When like Dracula comes to the, the city, how the city starts yeah. to just get depressed, and like everyone's like... Like, people are dying mysteriously. Everyone's scared to go out. Like, it just it feels like the entire sense of, like, atmosphere and evil descends upon the entire town. And I think yeah. that's effectively what this, this rotten has done to the school. I like that idea. I just wish there was a, a bit more meat to it. It kind of felt like we were just mm. quickly getting it explained to us as they were looking around, as opposed to it being a more fleshed-out uh, segment. So I think, I think there was... I, like I, I think there's good stuff in here, but I can see how it could be better, and I I I I wish it was better. So that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is what it is. Uh, uh, honestly, I wasn't sure if we would get as much conversation out of this, but we seem to have uh, have, have, have done so. So, uh, Tim, <laughs> what are you rating when evil lurks? Uh yeah. I mean, I I had a, a you know fairly good time with this movie. You know, despite yeah recognizing that there are some flaws but um yeah uh the 
there was a, a lot that was you know good about it i like generally i i do like the the premise of the story I, you know like the characters uh the acting was good direction all that stuff uh and uh and of course you know the standout stuff again just the the violence the gore and really how it's being presented to you like it, it, again just a lot of the scenes it's just like right in your face just making you kind of sit with it which might not be everyone's cup of tea <laughs> like um especially if you know if you are you know don't want something that's going to be maybe kind of bleak or, or depressing so oh yeah understandable uh, yeah if you're someone who never wants to see kids in violent situations i would yeah. stay clear <laughs> of this one yeah um but yeah i mean despite the flaws though, i i still generally had a, a a really good time and uh you know it, it, it was able to, to hold my attention and stuff so uh, I'm still going to go fairly high. I, I think I'll give it a, a 7.5. I think mm. the, again, some of the stuff that, that you know, they mentioned uh, just made the lack of explanations or building upon the world and stuff. It kind of keeps it just a, a little bit shy of like being great uh, for me, which, you know, I, I consider like, you know, once you re reach like an eight, it's like, oh, this is great. And then, so instead it's just like pretty good uh, for me, which, uh, hey, ain't bad <laughs> at all, uh, especially again compared to some of the stuff we've been watching uh in our 2023 catch up um yeah i i can see how it, it stands uh you know above the pact <laughs> for some of those things it has memorable moments if nothing else uh mm -hmm. yeah i think for me i, I think i'm going with a six like mm -hmm. you know it's, it's over the light it's got stuff in it that's worth seeing um i uh, well some movies that i give a six i think are really I really fun but i just can't rate them that high so they end up with something like a six this is kind of the opposite where i have enough problems that it's down to a six even though there's things in it that are, are good but i'm less likely to watch this one again versus you know like a funny slasher six out of ten this right. is a bit more like oh no it's disappointing that this is just a six i wish it was higher so you know a bit more lukewarm for me but uh, definitely stuff in it worth seeing. And I, I do think 2023 has been a weaker year for horror, so this is kind of, <laughs> you know, on the better end of the scale, sadly. Mm. <sighs> Would you say it was a good uh, year for sci-fi? Uh, 2023? Um, mm. I'd have to think about that a little bit. Uh, <laughs> can I tell you what, what was new? I haven't seen The Creator yet, so I'm not sure about mm. that. Uh, Infinity Pool was, was good, and that's kind of horror as well. In fact... If, if we're, when we do our horror 10, I'm going to count that as horror just to have another good movie on the list, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and Godzilla, the big one. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's one. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good year for sci fi. I think, yeah, well, yeah. you've reminded me about Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, you've got me curious now. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at a top 10 list. You, you made me question how much <laughs> sci fi there's been this year. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm steering clear of the, you know, that Zack Snyder of it all. So of I mean. course, of course. <laughs> uh, no one will save you. I guess counts as sci-fi. That was mm. that was bad. I guess if you count <laughs> Guardians three, um, it's a bit of a stretch, but sure. <laughs> I mean, it's sci-fi. They're in space. They're on other planets. There's aliens. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll give it to you. It's, it's not like, you know, like hard. Well, I mean, I guess there's a lot of sci fi that's not like realistic or hardcore Ooh. science. But, well, yeah, yeah, it doesn't need to be to be sci fi. Um, that said, though, I think Godzilla minus one alone makes it a better year for sci fi than, yeah. than it is a year for horror. I think that's. <laughs> that's very fair. Yeah. I think that's my instant feeling. Uh, all right. Well, that's the show, everyone. Um, We'll just remind you that you can go to patreon.com slash TV and you can support us over there, help keep the show coming, and you get a bonus episode. Uh, once a month, there'll be an episode that's just for patrons and YouTube members. Uh, <laughs> all the YouTube members are like year, like a year behind in bonus episodes because they started getting them way later. So if you want to be up to date with the latest releases uh, mm. on Patreon. But they are slowly going up in YouTube membership as well. Um, I just posted one last week on there from a while ago. So... Uh, mm. I'm hoping I'm going. I'm trying to go a little quicker on the YouTube so that eventually it will be in sync with Patreon. Mm -hmm. But it's taking some time. 
Uh, but yeah, we do bonus episodes. We do some fun, you know, weird movies or just cool things from the eighties that aren't as big. Like we did Deadly Friend recently. Mm-hmm. We've done stuff like Primal Rage and you know other just fun. No, oh, it was good. Some mm-hmm. some good, some less yeah. good, but usually something interesting to to watch and talk at, about. At the very least, it, it tries to be something that's worth discussing or, or has some kind of weird angle to it or, or something along those lines. Yes. Um, we've got a movie set in Valentine's Day planned for uh, the bonus episode that's coming out oh, yeah. on Valentine's. <laughs> so, Fingers crossed, hopefully that's good. <laughs> look, look forward to that. Another 80s movie. It seems to be the 80s movies are all on uh, on the, the, the bonus episode right now, but mm. I'm okay with that. I'm always down for some 80s movies. It's kind of insane to me that like we're still finding like really good like 80s horror movies that's like how did i not know about this i know it's so weird <laughs> uh so many of them came out but hey mm. uh that is the show uh and of course we do bonus even more streams videos as well you get those uh a couple mm-hmm. times per month and there's other things and whatnot so go check out patreon get bonuses for the other shows as well that is streams after midnight thank you very much for joining us we appreciate mm-hmm. it Keep watching scary movies. Uh, next time, we'll be looking at another big 2023 hit. I'm just remembering to tell you before I say bye. Uh, <laughs> and that is Five Nights at Freddy's. Ooh. A video game adaptation. Oh, uh, will it be Super Mario for the year's best video game movie? <laughs> I mean, it may. That wasn't that good, to be honest. Like it wasn't terrible, but it was a bland ass movie. Okay, it was mm, okay. Okay, it was a it was a lukewarm six out of ten. <laughs> anyway, that's the show, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, and we will see you next time. <laughs>